Okay, okay, so here we are. We're going to start with the tutorial on how to custom firmware your 9 bot Max. First of all, what we need to do is we need to remove these three screws. Once you've done that, there'll be a dashboard underneath, and we'll need to remove and dismantle that too. Okay, so we have here the Max G30 dashboard extracted out of the handlebars excuse my clean washing in the background okie dokie so what we need to do is like i said we need to remove this uh silicon uh compound that they've put on here um basically it's it's for water protection uh, moisture protection uh, we need to only remove this top section here. As stated, we need to access those three terminals there. And this one little uh, resistor here, which is C2. Um, I'll try and zoom into that for you guys. C2, it's the little yellow one right there in the middle there to the left okay um it is notable that you need to uh remove the headlight out of the uh handlebars uh in order to have the cable move out of remove out of there and also i forgot to mention there um, what you need to do is use a tool like so. Um, I uh, I make sure that I use the flat end, uh, flat side, as not to damage the PCB board. Um, there are people that suggest you use plastic, but I've had a lot of trouble with the plastic. Um, this is my third dashboard that I have uh, worked with. So yeah, just uh, just remember, um, you know, be be careful. the The PCB board is very delicate. You don't want to uh, cut any of those tracks. Alrighty, so we have now removed the C two resistor. I will zoom in, and so you can see. Sorry about the shaky video, guys. So, as you can see, C2 is nice and clean. There's uh, no short circuiting, no nothing. So, you want to make sure it's all good. Once we've done that, we step through to the next process. We need to reconnect all of the terminals back up. Uh, this for the the reason this is is we need to have the uh, dashboard uh, powered up with five volts. You can do this by simply reconnecting everything, but you must have all of the accelerator, brake, and uh, the light connected back up. Um, once we've done that. Then we're going to go on to flashing this with Bluetooth or BLE triple five, which the reason we're we're uh, flashing this over is because currently Segway have these dashboards uh, set to in well they have them not set to but they have them as encrypted Bluetooth, so communicating between the flashing software and the uh, uh, Bluetooth is virtually, well, no, it is impossible. Um, without the, obviously, the, the, the correct software. But anyways, I digress. So what we need to do for flashing this is a ST-Link. Now, in a lot of the tutorials or a lot of the other things, people are saying solder solder onto the, the those three ports uh 
Now, what I do is I solder, not solder, sorry. I have purchased just some little jumper cables. Uh, this is, you know, basically what they are. I then bound three of them together and we have our ground on the right. Then we have our, uh, da, 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 where is it? Our S, uh, SWCK. And then we have our SWDIO um, on the far right. So in the middle is the SW, uh, CLK. Okay. As you can tell from why I'm talking, I'm not an expert at this. I have just figured this all out on my own by reading all the tutorials and talking to other various people in the, uh, scooter hacking uh, forums. Um, everything I'm doing here is brought to you by scooterhacking.org. Uh, everything I have learned is available through them. Um, okay, so what we do is we then connect this up to our dashboard. Simply <laughs> by pressing on there. And I'll show you exactly what I'm going to be doing in a moment. So our next step is obviously, like I said, to flash the dashboard with BLE555. To do this, once you've got your ST-Link connected, you need to download this file. Now the link will be in the description. So, what we do now is we open up the folder. Now all this must be done after you've installed your Driversphere ST-Link. If you don't install the Driversphere ST-Link, obviously it's not going to work. Now with my trusty assistant, we're going to get this done. Okay, so what we do is we rest the three pins on those pads. We press enter. As you can see, we're now programming, flashing with BLE. Once you receive programming finished, then you know that everything has completed. So after you've flashed, successfully flashed with uh, BLE555, uh, what's required is you'll notice that you can't turn the dashboard on or off anymore, but that is quite easily fixable by removing the plug, disconnecting, and then Reconnecting the one thing I've noticed that uh, once you've uh, done BLE triple five is The Bluetooth starts flashing and then after a few seconds you'll actually notice that the Bluetooth light stops flashing I think this may be just a small bug. You are still able to connect via Bluetooth um, while it's flashing, but I've noticed I've been unable to connect to Bluetooth after it's finished um, flashing. Um, simple fix, you know, or simple way around that is just a turn her off, turn her back on, and she starts again, and then you're able to reconnect to your Segway uh, 9 Bot app or any of the uh, apps that you wanna use that work with it. Um, so yeah, this concludes the first part and we'll now move on to flashing with custom firmware.
So now we're on to the section of creating our custom firmware for our 9Bot Max G30 using the custom firmware toolkit provided by max.scooterhacking.org. Okay, so what we do is we scroll down. Now, I personally use um, uh, ES Down G. Uh, there are links on the website to download that. Um, that's on Android. Um, I have used 9Bot Flasher in Windows um, before, but for some reason, since I reinstalled Windows, it's not letting me use it anymore. But I've had perfect success with ES uh, Down G. Okay, so in here you'll see lots of different, uh, you know, settings we can play with. Now, I recommend not going above... 40. Um, now, this needs to be uh, mentioned. You're not going to get see any speed increase unless you change the serial um, of your scooter. Now, there is a link here uh, on how to change your serial number. I'm not going to go through that, but if you click that link, it will describe a tutorial step-by-step -step on how to do it. Now, I don't play with any of the other settings in here, except for motor start speed. I set that to two because I like to take off with one kick instead of two. Down here for motor constant power. Um, I recommend not going below... 45,000, uh, I have noticed a massive um, increase in torque and constant speed um, by adjusting this down. Um, like I said, I recommend not going below 45,000, but I personally go down to 40,000 on my own scooter, but I don't recommend it. Uh, it can damage your motor, it can damage your scooter, it can damage your battery. So it's a little bit of, you know, you know, user beware. In the section over here with version spoofing, you know, that's automatically set. I, uh, you know, I use that so that way it stops uh, 9Byte from updating your scooter with new firmware, removing the possibility of using custom firmware. Um, if you, a little note also down here, you see it has current based uh, throttle algorithm. If you choose that, whatever you put up here in the max top speed will be ignored and it will only go as fast as it possibly can, which is not you know uh, 40 um, also to mention even though I've put 40 kilometers in there the most I have been able to get my scooter to is 33 um, and that's at a hundred percent it has stayed there um, at third it goes down to 30 and has stayed there all the way down to 65 percent um, but uh, it's still early days and I'm still testing. Um, I have noticed though that the, 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 there is more constant power um, for longer as the battery drains. So yeah, uh, go and you know through the website and choose your own settings. This is all at your own risk. I don't want to be held responsible for anything you do. You do it at your own risk. Once you've done that, um, you click the submit form down here. It will ask you, do you really want to do that and generate your custom firmware? Of course you do. So then you'll notice that custom firmware downloaded. All right, now that we're going to flash the firmware custom firmware we just made onto our 
not. So once you've opened ES down G, select the scooter. Once you've done that, you need to check on, check, click on check ver. Once you've done that, click on open bin. Now we're going to go through and we're going to find the one that I just created. You'll see that it's loaded it down the bottom. Once you've done that, simple, just press flash. Sometimes you get the uh, sent retry error. Uh, generally, it's it's okay. Once the uh, process fi has finished, you'll get a message at the bottom. And done. Now to confirm that it's flashed it, we check the version again. As you can see, it's showing BLE version triple five. It has spoofed the driver version so that it no longer will update from nine bot side. You can uncheck that when you're creating your custom firmware. Um, if you want to, it's completely up to you. Uh, as you can see, we can also go in there and we can check our battery and that's it guys, uh, once you've uh, flashed that, it's time to take it for a ride and see how you go. Thanks for watching, if you like this video give us a thumbs up, uh, like, subscribe and all that other stuff. And uh, just a note that none of this would be possible without all the hard work from the guys over at scooterhacking.org.